Back with the two ways to build video series. Today we're gonna to be building two $600 gaming PCs, one from Intel and one from AMD. Both of them have really solid graphics cards and I'm even gonna show you the performance of them at the end of the video. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. If you don't already know, the big advantage of this two ways to build video series is that I craft these videos start to finish on the day that these videos go live, meaning that these are my absolute latest recommendations and hopefully everything is in stock by the time you're watching this video. Literally everything I talk about today is linked down in the description and we're gonna jump into the parts list after a quick word from today's sponsor. We've all seen the Raid Shadow Legends advertisements before, including here on my own channel, but man, every time I come back to this game, it literally just keeps getting better and better. I've always been a fan of the challenging and addicting style of gameplay with the top-notch graphics, 10 challenging dungeons and boss battles, 12 different campaign locations with multiple difficulties, and the best part is that there's over 460 unique champions that we can grind for. Not only can you play Raid on your phone or tablet, but you can also play it straight on your gaming PC, which is what I personally like to do. It's a perfect game for playing while watching Netflix or YouTube or browsing Reddit, or you can just give it your complete focus and get completely sucked in speaking from experience. Recently, they've also released their biggest update ever called the Doom Tower, which consists of 120 floors and 12 bosses to work your way through, and they just continue to release more and more content for this game. Now, you do need to be level 40 for the Doom Tower, and I'm only level 33, so I have some serious grinding to do. We actually have a ZTT community in the game, so join us today by clicking the first link down in the description, and if you're a new player, you'll also get an exclusive AF welcome pack with silver, gems, shards, and everything you need to get up and running even faster. Jumping straight into the Intel build for today, starting with the CPU, just like last week's $500 build guides, I'm gonna be using the i3-10100. This is just such a solid value buy right now at around $120. The 10100F should be cheaper by the way, but it's not in stock, but this 10100 is rocking four cores and eight threads with a max turbo of up to 4.3 gigahertz, which is just fantastic for gaming. Also, feel free to use the Intel stock cooler that it comes with and definitely remove that ugly blue sticker there, and it'll actually end up being an all black cooler that doesn't look terrible. Next up is the motherboard and here I'm going with an ASRock B460M HDV which although PC Part Picker says is currently out of stock it's actually just back ordered on Newegg and it says it'll ship within five to seven days and I would definitely recommend you take advantage of this. The ASRock HDV series is definitely a super budget lineup of motherboards but that does mean we can get some serious price to performance on this build as it only costs $77 right now and it at least has every feature that we need. Plugging into that motherboard would be the RAM and I'm so happy to see that the channel favorite YOLO 16 gigabyte all black kit is at a somewhat decent price of just $65 right now, but this is on a sale, so make sure you take advantage ASAP if you're following this build guide. Although it does hurt to see it at this price, last year this RAM kit was consistently available for around $52, but times have changed and it is what it is. Great set of RAM though, even for $65. Another channel favorite we have here today is the SSD, and that's the Crucial P1 500 gigabyte M.2 NVMe drive, and you just love to see this at $56. The Crucial P1 series is consistently one of my go-tos because it's a great NVMe drive rocking some DRAM and you just can't go wrong with it. I've used it so many times at this point. Next up is the power supply and this one surprised me a bit. You can actually find this EVGA 450BR brand new in stock today on Newegg for just $40. The 450BR is a C-tier power supply which is great for builds like this one today. It's 80 plus bronze certified and it's even rocking all black cables which is great for aesthetics. Do keep in mind that you of course could find this sometimes over on the EVGA B stock website. Here they sell for just $25, but it's a used product. So for only $15 more in stock, brand new right now, that's a pretty solid pickup, not gonna lie. Saving the graphics card for last, we get to the case. And today I'm gonna switch things up a bit and go with the Thermaltake Versa H18. Right now, this is on stock on Amazon for just $55. It's rocking a nice airflow design mesh front panel, clean micro ATX compact size, which matches our motherboard, and even a nice tempered glass side panel. Case selection is definitely more subjective than anything. So feel free to go with whichever one you want. I would personally just recommend a micro ATX size so the motherboard doesn't look tiny in there and definitely get one that looks baller, obviously. And then finally we get to the graphics card selection, obviously the most controversial part of them all. And although it's not in stock at this exact minute, my best recommendation guys is something like a GTX 1650 Super used either on Amazon Warehouse or EVGA B stock. I've personally picked up two 1650 Supers both for $180, one from Amazon Warehouse and one from EVGA B stock. And guys, you just need to put in the time 
time and really hawk these websites and you'll eventually find one at that price. The great thing about this build though is that before the graphics card, we have almost $200 to spend on the GPU and this leaves you with a ton of flexibility. I would recommend just getting whatever GPU around this price range you can see pop up, either new or used, anything like a GTX 1650 Super, GTX 1650, 1660 Super, RX 580, 5500 XT, or anything around this price range would be perfect for a system like this. But now it's time to switch over to the AMD build, and for the most part, this is a very similar build except for the core components of the CPU, CPU cooler, motherboard, and I even switched up the case. Starting with the CPU, because everything new is too highly priced today, I'm gonna get a little crafty here and actually recommend the Ryzen 5 3500X from AliExpress. I actually have a video coming very soon about this CPU, but the 3500X is essentially the younger brother of the 3600, and it's just slightly lower in clock speeds and there's no hyper threading. This is readily available on AliExpress for $130 to $145. And with this still being a very solid six core and six threaded CPU, that's actually a very solid option. If you take a look at the benchmarks, the 3500X compares directly with the 3600 in terms of gaming, slightly lower in FPS, but at this low of a price point, the 3500X is honestly one of my newer go-to recommendations. Keep in mind that if you buy from AliExpress, most of the time it does not come with a stock cooler. So I would recommend just going on eBay and trying to buy a Wraith Stealth cooler for around $10. I've done this several times now for my AliExpress builds. After that, we have the motherboard, and this is simply just the cheapest AM4 motherboard on the market right now, that being the Asus Prime A320M-K. I've used this board multiple times, and the BIOS has always been good to go for the latest Ryzen CPU, so I wouldn't really worry too much about that if you buy it directly from Amazon. Moving down the parts list, like I said, some of these parts are the same from the Intel build, that specifically being the RAM, SSD, and power supply. These are all just great buys right now, and I would copy them over from the previous build guide. The case is, however, where I change things up a bit again, purely just to make this video more entertaining, as you could go with the Versa H18 if you wanted to, but here I selected the Dark Flash DLM22. This one looks pretty sick for a micro ATX case, especially with this all-white design, and I'm actually using this one in an upcoming video as well, so keep your eyes open for that one. And then for the graphics, card, it's the same deal as the previous build, man. For this AMD build, we're left with around $180 to $200 for the graphics card, and I would really just find whatever you can get in stock, either new or used, but I would really try to target a 1650 Super, again, from either B stock or Amazon Warehouse. Here's what the final parts list is looking like for the AMD build, and whenever you get a hold of that GPU, this is going to make for a very powerful price-to-performance gaming PC. Now, I do want to talk about the estimated performance for these builds real quickly. Let me know down in the comment section if you want to continue you seeing this, and I'm simply using the PCBuilds.com bottleneck calculator for the data. For the AMD build with a 3500X, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 1650 Super, here you're looking at some of the benchmarks, which look fantastic. 65 FPS in COD Warzone at 1080p medium, 200 plus FPS in CSGO, Valorant in Ultra settings would get 130 FPS, and even R6 Siege in Ultra settings would get around 78 FPS. Keep in mind that these are just estimated settings, and don't blame me if they're slightly off, but they're also not using like pro Pro settings for the eSport title, so you could obviously get higher FPS if you crank down the settings a bit, which is what I usually do for my build guides. Over on the Intel build, we have virtually the same performance as most of these games are bottlenecked by the GPU, which is what you want for the most part. For some of these titles that rely more on the CPU, it looks like according to this data that the 3500X would perform slightly better, but you really can't go wrong with any of these systems. Definitely be sure to let me know what you think about both of these build guides down in the comments section. If you're looking for another $600 build guide where I actually build it and benchmark it on camera, then feel free to click the video that's on the screen now and that'll help you out with that. But just like always, I hope you enjoyed this video.